Welcome to part two of our five part NASM CPT study guide. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know in chapters five through 10. Truth is that this is the stuff that hangs a lot of people up for literally months. But I promise if you stick with me through the end of this video, that's not gonna be you. If you're with me in part one, you saw this visual that I brought up and I like to bring it up at the beginning of each section so you know how much of this is gonna be on the exam. And everything we cover in chapters five through 10 is gonna make up about 15 questions of your exam. So it is important, but even if you look at the material in chapters one through four, there will be more questions that come from that area. So even though we're gonna dive into a lot of science inside of today's video, just know it's gonna be a smaller component of your overall exam. And as we dive into chapter five, the nervous system, the muscular system, the skeletal system, this is a really great example of the science that overwhelms people inside of this section of the material. Everything is gonna matter, everything we learn, it's gonna matter as you become a trainer, but it might not all matter right now. Some things you may not really figure out how to apply until years into training. That is okay. We need you to know enough. And inside this chapter, one of the main concepts we want to make sure you understand, because it comes back up again in chapter seven, is what is the human movement system? Really this integration of your nervous system, your muscular system, and your skeletal system all working together. And what we'll find, especially as we get into assessments, is that if we have an issue in one, it may impact the others. This chapter also introduces a concept known as the kinetic chain. And this is one you're gonna see time and time again throughout the material. And to put it simply, this is just talking about the fact that our body is interconnected. Something happening in one area of the body is gonna impact the other because we have forces that are translating from joint to joint. Part of what makes NASM special and unique is the conversation and focus on the nervous system. But this is also what trips a lot of students up because they do give you a lot of deep information about different components of the nervous system. Don't worry about memorizing that information. You wanna make sure you understand how it all fits together and have an overarching understanding of what the somatic nervous system is, what the autonomic nervous system is, what is the parasympathetic and sympathetic, that's gonna be good enough. You do wanna make sure that you understand the three primary functions of the nervous system, and those come down to sensory, bringing in information, integrative, figuring out what it means, and motor, creating an actual response. They also start to talk a lot about muscles and how they connect with the nervous system. And this is where understanding what a motor unit is comes into play. A motor unit is gonna be all the muscle fibers that are innervated by this one alpha motor neuron. You're gonna wanna make sure you understand it so you can apply it. You're gonna wanna make sure you understand the role that mechanoreceptors play in proprioception. The words muscle spindle and Golgi tendon organ are gonna come up time and time again inside the content. So we wanna make sure we understand what they are and what they do. As we move into the skeletal system, I'm gonna recommend you guys keep it very basic here. Don't get bogged down with a lot of the detailed information about different bone types and bone shapes. Really what you need to know is form follows function. That's gonna be what dictates the shape of bones. And then when it comes to understanding what bones are my prime movers, what bones do my major muscles attach to, you're not gonna get asked specific questions on this, but understanding it in your mind is gonna help you apply things later on. When it comes to the spine and the vertebra, you are gonna to wanna to make sure you have a little higher level understanding than maybe some of the other bones. And this is because this is a very sensitive area of the body. It's gonna have a big impact on how clients are moving, and it's also gonna come up again when you get into chapters on posture. And now we get to dive into skeletal muscle, right? It has a lot to do with what we're gonna do here in the gym, but overall, we wanna make sure that we just understand the primary function. Muscles do play a variety of roles, but the main thing we're gonna talk about is driving motion and locomotion. And this chapter also starts to look more microscopic at like what's going on inside of our muscles. What are they made of? Another area that's pretty easy to get lost in, things like epimesium, paramecium, all these little functional components. It's valuable information, but I wouldn't worry about that as much as I would about just knowing what's the functional unit of the muscle and that's gonna be the sarcomere. This is the combination of those actin and myosin filaments coming together. I also don't want you to get overwhelmed with some of the information about action potentials and sliding filament theory. These are really complex concepts, but right now, just keep it simple. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you understand the difference between a type one, what we call a slow twitch muscle fiber, and type two muscle fibers. And when it comes to wrapping up skeletal muscle, we wanna make sure that we know all the major muscle groups. And I'm gonna be honest, the material does not do a great great job of teaching this to you. If you look in the appendix of the book, you'll see some different diagrams of the muscles, but I already know that's probably not how you're gonna learn it well. So if you wanna learn this better, check out the link in the description below to get access to our anatomy guide for trainers. This includes a video breakdown of me going through all the major muscles, as well as downloadable and blank charts 
for you to use. That's it, but Joe, there's more in the chapter. I'm telling you guys, if I didn't cover it in the video, it doesn't mean it's not important, but it's not important right now. I don't want you to major in the minors. I want you to focus on the stuff that's gonna be tested over most. And now we enter into chapter six, the cardiovascular, the endocrine, and the digestive system. And I'm gonna say it up front. These are three big major systems that are plugged onto one chapter. So right away, you can take it in the fact that NASM does not expect you to be an expert in any one of these systems. So as we go through the bullet points, you'll see I'm gonna keep it pretty basic. So you wanna have a basic overall understanding of how the cardiorespiratory system, which is made of the cardiovascular and the respiratory, work together to make sure that we get oxygen and nutrients to the tissues that need them. When it comes to the information in this chapter about the heart specifically, we do wanna know that cardiac tissue functions a little bit different than skeletal muscle, but the main thing you need to know is what are the basic chambers of the heart? What are the ventricles? What are the atria? And how does blood flow through it? And another piece of the cardiorespiratory system that is not only important for your exam, but honestly I find pretty interesting and relates a lot to training are the mechanisms of breathing. And so in here, you wanna make sure you understand what are the muscles that are involved during inhalation, during exhalation, and where should breathing primarily be driven by? I'll be honest, I find the endocrine system extremely interesting, but we don't need to go that deep. And honestly, it's probably not your primary role as a trainer. So overall, we wanna make sure you understand how the endocrine system works, but don't get caught up memorizing glands. You do, however, want to make sure you have a good understanding of how insulin and glucagon work together to regulate glucose levels. Other than that, just have recognition level knowledge of some of the other hormones mentioned in this chapter, like cortisol, growth hormone, testosterone, and estrogen, and how they're impacted by things like sleep and exercise. And guys, when it comes to the information about the digestive system in this chapter, I'm going to tell you, read it once and don't look back. And it's not because it's not valuable, it's not important, but it might not even be inside of our scope of practice and it sure doesn't come up on the exam. We dive in deep in chapter five and then chapter six isn't that bad and then we kind of dive back in again with chapter seven. You're gonna see some recurrence of some of the concepts that came up in chapter five in this chapter on the human movement system. And this really dives into the science of movement, biomechanics, kinesiology. We're gonna keep you focused on the right stuff. Building off of chapter five, we wanna make sure that we really understand and we can apply the concept of the kinetic chain, not just that forces translate through the body, but how does that start to impact things like movement and posture? And there's no way around it. There's a fair amount of memorization inside of this chapter, especially the information like tape Table 7-1 with anatomical terminology. It might not be the sexiest. You might be wondering, am I gonna use this with clients? Maybe not, but you need to know it for the exam. You also wanna make sure that you have a basic understanding of planes of motion. Not only what they mean, but also identifying in an exercise what plane of motion a joint might be moving in. And as a new personal trainer, you absolutely have to master the information on muscle contraction. This means not only understanding what is an eccentric, what is an isometric, what is a concentric, but also knowing how to apply it in the gym. Along with muscle contraction, this chapter also introduces the various roles of muscles, knowing what an agonist is, the prime mover in an exercise, understanding what an antagonist is, the opposite muscle group, and also being able to identify things like synergistic and stabilizer muscles. And when it comes to open versus closed chain, you want to be able to recognize the difference between one and the other, but don't get too caught up in this. I'm not a fan of reading and memorizing every chapter, but this is one that has a lot of terms that come up inside your exam. So you wanna make sure that you pay attention to things like reciprocal inhibition, the stretch shortening cycle, because these concepts will come up again later in the material. The information presented about subsystems in this chapter is new, and it's kind of a higher level way of thinking about how the body works together, but you are gonna wanna make sure you understand what muscles exist inside of each subsystem, which ones are a part of the anterior, the posterior, and the lateral subsystem. A lot of students really get caught up on the lever systems. You don't need to go too deep here, but you do want to make sure you understand what is torque, this rotational force that drives human motion, and have a basic understanding, be able to recognize examples of first, second, and third class levers. Now chapter seven, it can feel like a lot, but stay focused on the stuff we mentioned inside of this video. You need to know enough of the right stuff right now, and we covered it. And as we move on, now we get to jump into chapter eight, exercise, metabolism, and bio energetics and this is simply how our body breaks things down like carbohydrates proteins fats and turns it into fuel and the complex processes 
that get us there. And this one's really interesting because this chapter starts to introduce us to the concepts that'll bleed into nutrition and also the basis for aerobic training. So make sure you guys give this one attention. One of the first major concepts we wanna make sure we know inside of this chapter is the relationship between intensity and fuel usage. And you can pretty much guarantee that as we increase our intensity, our body will shift more and more towards carbohydrate metabolism. This chapter is the first place where we start to introduce macronutrients, proteins, carbs, fats. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you know the energy density, and that means how many calories do I get from a gram of each. This tells us how much energy they have. And we'll also wanna understand how these fit into our three primary energy systems. In addition to understanding the difference between our ATP phosphocreatine system, our glycolytic system, and our oxidative system, you're also gonna to wanna to know what kinds of activities are driven by each of those. Table 8-1 is a great resource. A major takeaway in this chapter is energy systems don't go on and off, but all three are constantly working together to drive exercise and fuel for any activity that we do. And it all comes down to which one is dominant. And we wrap up chapter eight by making sure you have a good understanding of all the factors that go into total daily energy expenditure, all the different things that make up how much energy we expend in a day. And that's a perfect transition into chapter nine, nutrition. And you're probably like, finally, Joe, something I was hoping to learn more about. Well, yes and no. Honestly, the industry at large, NASM and other organizations, look at nutrition as a very small component of our role as a new personal trainer, right? You can see it's only one chapter in 23 chapters of the material. So we're gonna cover the basics, but you don't need to go much deeper. And that all kicks off with reviewing our scope of practice. This chapter introduces some information about registered dietitians, nutritionists, and personal trainers. So you wanna make sure you have an understanding of where we fit inside that spectrum. You probably picked this one up in chapter eight, but we wanna make sure we know the energy density of each of our main macronutrients. And this really just means how many calories are associated with each gram. Outside of energy density, you also wanna know what are the primary roles of these macronutrients in the body. When it comes to carbs, it's pretty simple. It's just energy. But proteins and fats are a little bit more complex. So make sure you pay attention to the other roles they play in our system. This chapter does give you some information on recommendations of carbs, proteins, and fats, but I would focus primarily on those protein recommendations. This is also an easy one to get tripped up on with some of the different charts, so make sure you know the difference between basic recommendations and real muscle gain. So in wrapping up the information you guys need to know on chapter nine, this is really a great area of ongoing learning, but it's not a major roadblock for most people on the exam. If you really understand the basics, you're gonna be just fine. Chapter 10, supplementation, probably another one where you're really interested if you're like me, but it's not really gonna be cornerstone content inside your NASM certification. It's not the area you need to be the most knowledgeable in, but clients are gonna have questions. So we're gonna cover the basics and beyond that, just aspire to be a great resource for the people you work with. Probably the most important thing you can take away from this chapter is having a basic understanding of some of the recommendations and guidelines for responsible use of supplements. There are definitely things out there that can work, but it's a widely unregulated industry and we wanna make sure we're knowledgeable. So as far as what to focus on, just make sure you have a basic recognition level knowledge of some of the information on the most common supplements they talk about in this chapter, like creatine, like caffeine and protein. And probably the major testing takeaway is just make sure you understand your scope of practice and be able to recognize that inside of questions. That wraps up part two content. And if you've been with me since part one, that means we've covered the first 10 chapters of material. That's huge progress. Now I wanna say, if you continue with me through the next three parts of this video series, you're gonna continue to find out exactly what you need to focus on to pass your exam. But it's still up to you to learn it. And if you're anything like our students, that's the tough part. So if you feel like you learn better via video, you love the idea of being a part of a live class with other students, and you wanna learn alongside a real life instructor with decades of training experience, then check out the link in the description below to find out more about our next live virtual classroom experience. Otherwise, let's move on to part three.